Okay, so a uh, few remarks to uh, Jeremy. I'll try to uh, uh, just uh, uh, keep your interest alive by uh, just emphasizing one uh, particular aspect, uh, which is the, uh, the memory of Orwell today. So uh, I will take a look at, um, um, to use um, um, the terminology of the other science about of memory related to Orwell. And uh, with due uh, a recognition that this uh, happens to be something quite uh, um, varied, uh, that there is a, a some heterogeneousness about, about this. So I will be taking a look at you know, what landmarks that re remain uh, uh, about uh, Orwell today, uh, monuments basically uh, related to Orwell, uh, taking a, a look at material and non-material elements, uh, that is to say institutions also that are related uh, to, uh, to him. So um, I started on the, uh, um, pretty, pretty much on the assumption that there was, um, in fact, little that uh, seemed to celebrate all well today, uh, because I think I took a look at the wrong uh, elements. I was quite surprised to realize that um, there was actually no uh, um, street names uh, related to, uh, to Orwell in London, and uh, realized that, in fact, this is a very un an English type of practice, of uh, debaptizing de de uh, streets, and to give them uh, the name of a, a famous contemporary. The only instance I could find of this presence of Orwell in Toponymy was actually in Barcelona, uh, a square uh, which ironically is now uh, riddled with uh, 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 surveillance cameras. Uh, so this was inaugurated in 1996. Uh, so basically, I, uh, what I want to, uh, to take a look at, and uh, my contention, is that um, since the early 1980s, uh, what, uh, what we can witness in, in Britain is, uh, is um, a pretty much a proliferation of uh, commemorative uh, initiatives. And uh, one could almost use the term coined by Caspi in his, uh, in British French historian Caspi's uh, uh, 2008 report that there is some, some kind of a commemorative inflation about uh, about Orwell. But I use this notion with uh, immediate qualifications because Kasky uh, was discussing uh, when he re released that report uh, the increase of public official commemorations in France. Why, what is quite striking about uh, the Orwell case in Britain is, in fact, how little uh, these initiatives are, are related with official uh, uh, celebrations, you know, backed by government and so on. So that's uh, an altogether uh, quite different process. So, um, what um, I think needs also to be highlighted is that uh, um, this, in this importance of Orwell in collective memory, that what we are uh, discussing is a, is a fairly complex phenomenon, uh, which, as uh, August Adbach um, uh, showed in his works on collective memory, is something which is related to a process of selection, uh, a process, of course, of mythic, mythic, myth, sorry, mythification. Uh, so uh, that's what I will be taking uh, a look at too, that is to say how uh, this is uh, related to uh, a discussion also about the presence of the past, uh, and also I think related to what Nietzsche calls the three useful uh, dimensions of this presence of the past. So on the one hand, monumental history related to this mythification process, on the, on the, uh, the second point is, uh, is traditional history, so what is uh, related to reference for, uh, and, uh, and uh, the sense of belonging uh, that one relates to objects taken from the past, and finally critical history, that is to say, the, perhaps or more precisely, the, the business of history. Uh, uh, so uh, that is the third, the third point which I, I, I will hardly raise. I will focus on uh, those, uh, those elements that pertain to this uh, uh, transformation of all well in, in this process of, of, of memory. So. Uh, what um, I will, um, the, the way um, my um, presentation is going to be organized is basically to present what I decided to call uh, the cult of St. George uh, in, uh, in contemporary Britain. So uh, uh, this is, um, I think, related to uh, uh, the fact that to a very large extent, uh, as this quotation from uh, Jackie Jura, one of the leading uh, Orwell devotees today, as someone running a, a your world to your website, which contains a host of information about what happens to the or or well, uh, or well museums and apps and so on. What she, she should suggest here is that there should be a constitution of a Saint George or well day, which I thought was a very striking way, uh, and, a, and a striking admission that there is this secular saint dimension of, of, of around the character. So I will be taking a look at this. Uh, process of, and, and the many forms of this, uh, this cult of, of, of St. George. 
Uh, and uh, I will first highlight uh, the issue of relics. So that will be my, my and, and my second point will be, of course, about this uh, this why you have this uh, this uh, inflation in in the memory uh, uh, process. Why all that matters in uh, in collective memory today. So uh, on with my first point, this so-called cult of St. George and then the multiplication of those signs of memory related to all that. So first of all, I want to get back to the first point, how discreet, uh, um, I mean, the presence of Orwell in autonomy, the names of streets, uh, and in toponymy, um, uh, the name of institutions, and so on, Orwell seems to, uh, to be. One element, I think, is a fair indication of this process. Uh, in 1984, Madame Tussaud uh, just uh, used uh, the wax statue of Orwell, you know, given, uh, I mean, that, that, that very year, when they thought that it was rather suitable for them to present this wax statue, but in the very early days of 1985, they decided to just remove it and put it away. There was a collection. Uh, I asked, uh, actually, the, the PR people at Madame Tussauds had, had any idea of bringing it back to, into the museum, but I have no uh, reply uh, uh, today uh, from uh, from them. So uh, uh, they judged that you know the usefulness of this uh, you know symbol of uh, of all well uh, uh, just. Uh, um, uh, was no longer you know, uh, 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 evident, so they decided just to simply discard it. Uh, so um, that's, I think, one, one first um, element that shows that uh, for all uh, the, the, uh, the celebration of Orwell, which starts off, I think, to a large degree, as um, uh, François Bolt uh, said this morning in, in 1984 in France, but also in Britain, how uh, this process grew to be reinforced. So, um, I'll take a look at that later on. I, will, I, I want to, uh, to, uh, to get to the issue of relics. It's one thing uh, which I think is very uh, striking about also this cult of St. George. Uh, the way, uh, one of the difficulties about, uh, about this is uh, the absence, it's fairly well known about the talk of, 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 of uh, sound recordings and films of uh, Orwell, and there is some kind of ongoing quest for finding you know, uh, footage with Orwell. Uh, DJ Taylor, actually, uh, 40 Femme, you know, uh, something, uh, you know, uh, a short glimpse of Orwell a few years ago. This has, you know, not yet materialized. This was compensated by uh, uh, one uh, documentary, uh, uh, Orwell Life and Pictures, that was released in 2003. It was in the centenary of, uh, of uh, Orwell's birth, and I really recommend you to watch it because there is a fantastic performance uh, of uh, Chris Langham uh, playing the part of Orwell. So I think this was one way to compensate this lack of a, of a, a visual uh, relics. There are a few photographs from the notorious at the National Portrait Gallery, but there is not uh, much uh, else. So uh, in terms of relics, uh, and something that shows this obsession with Orwell, um, 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 an anecdote that was uh, um, uh, told um, uh, yesterday to me by them regarding the fact that T.J. Taylor was awarded uh, Orwell's state a few years ago uh, after he realized afterwards that many other people had been killed through the same sort of state